<laughs> Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of April 7th. We're already in April. Yes, we are. Welcome. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting with me digitally across the internet, of course, today, as always. Alex. How are you? Oh. You smell that? You smell that? I, oh, I, I smell think it. I smell what, is it? I, 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 what is it? What is it? I smell it. In the some air. bullshit. <laughs> that is in reference to a, 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 a something a later in the show. topic we're going to be talking about the show. We, 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 you, you click the headline. You know what it is. Timestamps below if you want to skip to it. But please listen Man, to the whole show if you don't mind. If, for, achiever, for achievers who know what this episode is going to be we've done it, be about. We've done it before. Yeah. I was about to say, I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. Oh my god! We'll we'll, we'll save it. We'll, we'll save get it. to it. We we'll get to it. We we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Yeah. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. If you're on YouTube, remember like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. That helps us with the algorithm. Remember, you can head over to a podcast service of your choice that you're currently listening on. You have five star reviews. Spotify now does five star reviews. So just about every podcast service does five star reviews. Thank you so much. Remember, if you want to support us financially, patreoncom achievers. Read the tiers if you'd like. You can donate there. Um, we have multiple pay structures that you can look at pennies a day for you means support for us and we appreciate everyone who has over there if you like to interact with the show remember you can tweet at us but also patreon dms will always be top of the mind so if you want to be on the show patreon way to do it speaking of patreon i guess i don't know we're going into rapid fire because we have a really big show today alex so i need to yes. start now that's why I have my caffeine. First. Yes, I do too. I have a little, well, it's kind of the opposite of caffeine, CBD drink, but mm. yeah, whatever. Interesting. First rapid fire. The Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia's electronic gaming development company has acquired a 96% stake in the King of Fighters developer SNK. This is, uh, of course, worrisome for anyone that likes uh, just rights in general. Uh, Saudi Arabia sucks in a lot of ways, uh, especially if you uh, bring up anything social or a woman or anything like that so hearts go out to people who like smk i'm sure a lot of people out there are like this that fucking sucks um let's hope it doesn't change anything for the game um up to you what you want to do with that information yeah 96 percent. so it's crazy I was like, why 90 well why not it's like it's 96 percent. why like why is it just, what's why the f- why stop is, is, yeah, well, which stop, one? so most what likely, is the four percent gonna get you? So most likely there's someone that's just not gonna sell. There could be yeah. I mean it could be a bunch of things. It, who knows? Uh maybe there maybe there's someone there that's like, I'm not giving up my share. I have no idea. Um, um they have way more of a controlling share, so I have no idea like, why not. It's like way. uh the South Park ep- the post COVID special was like, Oh, like, everybody's here vaccinated, but this guy. <laughs> <laughs> there's that one guy that doesn't want to do anything. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> yep. That is true. There's the one guy who's like, I'm not doing it. No, I'm not, not doing, doing it, man. Uh this is gonna be um I think a little cheery for a lot of the achievers out there because we were okay. more so Alex, but we were kind of a, a mm. celebratory force for Days Gone. So Days Gone director Cheer. Jeff Ross has now joined Crystal Dynamics as a design director at Crystal Northwest in Seattle. This is a subsidiary studio, of course, of Crystal Dynamics. This makes sense because he did say he did want to work on Uncharted one day. This, mm. Hey, next best thing, right? You got Tomb Raider. So. Hey, man. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about Tomb Raider in the rest of the show, but I do want to bring that up. Alex, does that make you... Of course, this is a rapid fire, so uh, it's to, you know talk about it as long as you'd like. But does this make you happy for the next Tomb Raider? I mean, you got your Days Gone director right on top. Yeah, of no, it. I mean, I I'm I'm glad that they're not just like stuck. You know, the it's like oh, and since we can't do Days Gone two, there's nothing gonna be out. Nothing else is gonna happen. I'm glad that they're moving forward. Moving on. I do feel a little yeah. sad. You know, Days Gone is always gonna you know stay a little yeah. part of my heart right there. But yep. you know, hey, time to move forward. Yep. I think that's a I think that's a great way of, of yeah. doing that. IGN was in the hot Twitter seat, as lots of people are every week. They revealed, <laughs> almost as if this is supposed to be some sort of incentive for doing it, that they pay freelancers $20 a story, depending on the story, of course, basically revealing their pay structures of how much they pay their, quote, freelancers. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to make this quick only because there's not much I think we could really discuss. Alex, this is why I included it in the rapid fire. So basically what happened is an employee of IGN tweeted out, hey, we are hiring for freelancing kind of positions. We pay $20 a story, but you can be paid more if the story is bigger now. The, <laughs> you're smiling. You can see the... <laughs> 
I mean, ballsy to go. I'm going to tweet out we pay $20 a story to our free people. Now, yeah. There's multiple ways you could do this. Obviously, this uh, particular lady is not in charge. A lot of people are yelling at her as if she makes the pay structure. It's not her problem. Um, make fun of IGN for that. Uh, frankly, we all know they could pay them more. Yeah. I don't think anyone really would dispute that. They could pay them more. I don't think there's really anywhere else to add there. Uh, it was just kind of hilarious that, I mean, it was, I, I was like, what were you expecting? I don't know why you would tweet that out and be like, what? People are upset. What? We paid $20 a story. Now that is, you know, that is kind of normal. That some, guy back, some, yeah. by, some guy back there, he's like, man, I got 10 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> There's someone like, you guys are getting paid for this? <laughs> like in that, uh, <laughs> that gif? <Yep. laughs> Wait, you guys are getting paid? Like, I mean, that is what freelancing are, right? You're doing it for free. Yeah. There's a, pro, you know, there, there's, the, there's a pro and con, right? You work for free to prove yourself, and then that gets you in the position yep. up and position up. But you're working for free. Does that constitute? I kind of, I've always wanted to do that stuff, but mm-hmm. I've always had the problem of saying like, hey, yeah, I'll do this for free for a long time and just kind of hope I'll eventually get something. Mm-hmm. It's I like, don't know it's if a that's... commission. You know, you're not getting paid by hours. You're like hoping you make the sale. Yeah. So it's, it's a pro con. Like I do. I get it, but also, yeah. like, I've always wanted to do it, but I've never done it because I'm like, I'd rather devote my time to something I can eventually make money on. I mean, we do this for free, right? So I guess that I'm kind of eating my words with that, but I don't know. I've never wanted to be like, yeah, I'll work for your site for free <laughs> instead of just doing my own stuff. So I'm like, I don't know. I mm-hmm. want to bring that best rap fire achievers. If you want a longer episode, we could definitely do that on that subject. Alex, I don't know if you like this. This is exciting for me because I played them all with my father a mm-hmm. long time ago. Max Payne 1 and 2 has been officially announced as a remake by Remedy themselves. This so is I'm a, par- I am excited for this. Yeah, so this is a partnership with Rockstar, of course. They hold the IP. Um, I'm going to read a little excerpt from their actual statement. They made a statement on their website about how it's basically going to work out. So Remedy Entertainment, the creators of Max Payne, are pleased to announce that they will remake the iconic Max Payne 1 and Max Payne 2 fall of Max Payne video game in a new development agreement with Rockstar Games. So this relationship between Remedy and Rockstar dates back to the original release of the critical game, Max Payne 1-2, you know, blah, 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 all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. Basically, they come to say, yeah, we're going to make one. Um, Under the developer agreement, this is what they end it with. Remedy will develop the games as a single title for PC, PlayStation 5, and Series S and X. I wanted to bring that up with their proprietary Northlight game engine. So they're using their own engine. Uh which I believe was made for, if I remember correctly, Control. Pretty sure it was. I can't quite remember right now, but pretty sure it was. So, Alex, I want to bring this up, again, as a rapid fire, because there's not really much to talk about, but uh, first off, next-gen only title. That's exciting. Yep. I think we're slowly getting away from last-gen. Uh, clearly yep. by this time, which, what, five years from now we'll probably see this, mm-hmm. we'll be moving away from next-gen. So this is, this is exciting. I thought, honestly... Max Payne was gone. I, I thought uh, Remedy would have moved on because they have a lot of projects mm-hmm. going on right now. So this is just I'm another just, thing. That I'm wondering, because I've never played Max Payne 1 and 2. I've always played 3 on the right. 360. Okay. So I'm excited to play this, but do you think there's a reason why they didn't add 3 to this? Because 3, 3 was a 360 game. Do you think it's too 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 close? That's a good question. I, I, I can't really hazard a guess. I imagine... Because Max Payne 1 and 2 was on what? It wasn't uh, PS2. on PS2. PS2, so it wasn't on 360 at all. No, no, it was way before. Okay, so it was way before 360. Okay, so it was way before been, 360. I don't quite remember because, again, I was. Max Payne was, was back PS2. Then. Let me see, Max Payne. They should, two. both should be PS2. I just don't remember. I think um, so. I don't remember what yeah, year. 2000. Fall of Max Payne. Two? Yeah, it was PS2. Uh, 2002? Oof. It's so close, man. 2003 was Max oh, Payne 2. God, that was going to say 2. You're always a year off. I'm always, I'm always a year off. I always second guess myself. But yeah, I, I remember playing those games. They're fun. It's Max yeah. Payne. I'm excited to see them remade because they do say remake. I do try to hold that remakes uh, hopefully remaster. mean something. So remake, hopefully they're actually remaking them. They do say that in the yeah. thing, but people sometimes use it will and But I do think Remedy's mm. going to sit down and actually remake this title. The question is, remade, R- Remedy's really busy. So this is another project they're bringing on. I, I can't wait to see what else because we know they're making a control multiplayer game. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're also making uh, the Alan Wake game that they announced. Now they're doing this, and I believe they have a collaboration title on top of that. 
So they're working possibly on three, four projects at once. I mean, I mean, they're a big studio, but geez, that's a lot of projects. And once you, yeah. but shout out to them. I love Remedy ever since Quantum Break. I mean, yeah. Alex, you you know that. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Like, more. I mean, we, yeah. Control was even. Control was like the sequel of Quantum Break we never got. So, I mean, mm-hmm. please keep it coming. Keep it coming. This is a quick one. I don't have much to say about this. Tencent is shutting down its game streaming platform, Penguin Esports. Um, this is according to a writer's report. Uh, nothing to say about that. It's just interesting. There was a yeah. quick write up that like it might be based on some sort of new strategy Tencent is doing. Um, China is implementing implementing a lot of laws to do with uh you know how, how long people can play games because they have a completely different kind of social network they have over there. Maybe that's mm-hmm. it. Who knows? But again, that rapid they- fire. That or they can use that to buy some more stuff. <laughs> Shut that down. Like divert the money to somewhere else. Yeah. Alex. Yes. Let's get into the actual news of the story. Now, on the top is something I'd never in a million years thought I'd ever see. Hassan Kerman mm. has come out of the shadows to give in-person interviews <laughs> on camera for either his detriment or his... Well being. I, I should have. I should have made that. I should have made this in the thumbnail. In my head, all I see is, you remember the movie Ace Ventura where he just yes. comes out. Oh my god! Just, the rhino? Instead of Jim, instead of Jim Carrey, <laughs> <laughs> it's Hassan Kerman's face just coming Jesus out. Jesus Christ! <laughs> just no. <"Ugh." laughs> and there's the people in the background like, oh my god, <laughs> it's birthing. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, he, yeah. He, he had face. Yeah. So uh, let me read up the write up I got, and then we could get into this. However, we want to tackle this subject. So, Asad Karaman, the head of Blue Box Studios, has had some interviews recently. Going around the last couple of days, you probably have spotted them somewhere. So far, it seems IGN and Last Stand Media have both posted interviews with this mystery man. For those out of the loop, or you might need a refresher, we have multiple videos on them, but there's the slight, way too fast summation of what's going on because I cannot write everything. Because it would be mm. a two-hour-long episode of deep diving into this man. I would love to do that, Achievers. If you want me to do that, I would love to. So I will if you want. But I can't right now. So, for those out the loop, Saw Kerman thrust into the spotlight after many confusing statements and really strange coincidences all happening at once. The original statement that started this storm that I could find began June of 2021. With a studio's Twitter tweeted out the following, quote, Guess the name of our game. It starts with S and ends with L, end quote. This, of course, made people ravenous. That, yeah, that this would immediately be like, all right, this is Silent Hill. Who is Blue Box? All right, this might be Hideo Kojima posing as another studio like they did with Phantom Pain. Going on and on and on. They later deleted a tweet, denied working that it was Silent Hill. Mm-hmm. People ignored the fact that it's not Silent Hill, it's Silent Hills, which I never knew, by the way, until that day. I was like, oh, it's Silent Hills? I, I didn't even know that because I never played the games. Yeah, there are many, many other weird situations with this man. For instance, his name translating exactly into Hideo Kojima. No one knowing who this man is or any of his colleagues he's ever worked with throughout his entire time in the industry. This man seems to be 30 plus. No one has ever said he's worked with him. We have never seen someone say they work at Blue Box. Also, it doesn't help. This is a thing I keep bringing up because it's so weird. This doesn't help, and no one brings up Hideo Kojima's side of this because everyone, somebody could just ask Hideo as if this is happening. No one's asking. No, and as far as I understand, no one's asked this man. It doesn't help that Hideo has also been baiting people with several posts, several posts all over his Twitter account. The most telling is a Twitter post on June 9th, twenty twenty one. Interesting, interesting timelines there. By the way, saying mm-hmm. quote thanks Hi- uh, Harper Books. The Silent Wife by Karen Slaughter, the latest in the Will Trent series. The last window was kidnapping action. And then there's Joe Hill's short story, Full Throttle. He's been much more interesting in short stories than in long ones. Looking forward to both of them, end quote. If you missed the subtext, The Silent Wife, and then the name Joe Hill, is very strange to just be a coincidence that he's tweeted out. This is not the first tweet. He has tweeted out several other things, like a pencil he was holding with a pyramid on it, with was Pyramid Head's thing. There's a bunch of other stuff I can go into, but that is just what I'm covering right now. To end this wild charade that I'm going on, I do not want to say, because I did say uh, 
IGN gave it. I don't want to say IGN was a terrible interview, but it definitely missed the mark in terms of what I would have asked him. And luckily, Last Stand Media kind of answered the questions I really wanted to hear about, right? Yeah. yeah. So I implore everyone right now to go listen to both if you want. I recommend Last Stand's way highly. It was originally posted behind a paywall. You can now access it freely. Go to yep. their YouTube, you can watch it. It is a fantastic thing. I am not spoiling the interview right now. I'm going oh, to bring no. up maybe two things from that entire interview. I am not I'm not even going to say what the most compelling thing that happened out of there. I am not. I'm just going to say a couple little things. The rest you have to watch it because it's just too good to spoil. Because it is fucking crazy what that man... It's... I can't... No. Just go, go listen to it. So, after going to that First off, I'm surprised that man even agreed to do that. He either doesn't know Colin Moriarty, which is a very he's a very smart man in the industry. He's made games. He's founded two companies. Kind yeah. of funny in his own company that he's at right now. So he agreed to go on this with a very smart man that would a- he knew would ask him hard questions. And if he didn't, mm-hmm. he did not Google this dude's name one time. Yeah, it's going to like a lion's den. You're like, is that a is that it, it's, it's like is, wearing a necklace a of meat? Cat? It's like wearing it's, a necklace of meat in a lion's den. That is a great yeah. analogy, Alex. So, my summation out of all of that is as follows: This man is either a pathological liar and was able to dupe everyone at PlayStation to not only get a PlayStation blog, not only get a PlayStation app, but also have full front coverage of a PS app also getting debug trophies and all these weird shit that playing games that aren't released attached to his trophy account all that weird stuff either he's just lying to everyone and he's lied so well that he's like gotten into a high pedestal and it's just mm. duped everyone and has nothing to show for it because all of it's just reused unreal assets every time he showed the game none of it's been like almost none of it's been original or Hideo Kojima is some way involved in this either he's paying this man they're friends he's made this weird whatever you want to call this situation some mass marketing baganza or lastly this is actually what it seems, and this is mm-hmm. a guy trying to make a game. And he were, just fucked up multiple ways. I think a, the least likely thing, before I give it to you, Alex, mm-hmm. the least likely of those three things is the last one, in my opinion. There is just, I can't, I just can't, I can't believe all of these things happening. And this is just some guy just, trying to make a game. It's just I too much of a coincidence. It. I just fucking, Alex... I refuse to believe that. It can't. Did, I can't. I can't. There's there there a theory. There was a theory that before this interview had came out uh, showing his face, that everybody was thinking he he was actually an an AI of uh, no, the game. I don't. I, so first off, that's hilarious. Yeah. Second off, he's a real person. We've seen yeah. him before when he posted that weird apology thing where mm-hmm. it was like lit and there was a very professional camera used. And I'll say mm-hmm. it again, he was way too clean to be a game uh, industry person. People are dirty. We're all dirty in this industry because none of us shower, right? So he was way too clean. And I, I was, I'm throwing it to you. You listened to some of the interview. I did too. Yes. So yeah, so I did listen to the la- uh, Last Stand Media interview. I listened to about 40 minutes. I think it's about, I think it's about an hour. Yeah. Again, we're not spoiling anything here. We're no. just going to... Let's just brass say, tax. What did you feel about man? L- let's just man, like what ten minutes in, I'm already calling bullshit, dude. It's that fast. It's just like literally. I looked at Colin, his 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 expressions towards him, and I'm doing that. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm just like bullshit. <laughs> the man just he just. Every like time, the questions just, Colin asks, it's like he took him right out of my mouth. I'm like, yeah. thank you for asking that. Yeah, every I mean, every time he asks a question, I'm like, dead to rights, answer it. Sometimes he refuses, sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he answers it in just confusing and frankly confounding ways that make zero sense. Absolutely zero sense. 
Sometimes go, he answers it by not answering it. Go listen to the interview. We're gonna end it there because I, I yeah, it's we a, can't we can't really talk about it without just basically spoiling that interview. And I will yeah, not it's, do it's that to it. like you have to go. And I won't do that to that man's content. It's too good. I, I'm not stealing yeah. any any views. Go yeah. listen to it. Report back if you want to talk like in the comments or something or tweet at me. We can talk there. Jesus, Jesus, man. Well. Something will happen eventually, and we'll, I'll either be a fool, or I'll at least be able to say, okay, I told you so. Moving on. This was a great interview I wanted to bring up. Bioware's Aaron Flynn gave an interview at USA Today. This is a collaboration with uh, Good Luck Have Fun, which is, I actually didn't know this. This is a giant kind of collaborative media outlet for the gaming industry. It's very interesting. I did not know that. I had to like, read up on them and stuff. And a lot of it was about his career, but one main, pain, one main point point. Pain point, sorry, uh, stood out to me. I wanted to bring it up here. So a lot of it was centered around kind of Dragon Age Inquisition. And there were multiple points that he brought up that kind of hurt the game in his opinion to him. Uh, a lot of it was technical based, and there were two things that were continually brought up. One issue, of course, is if you, and a lot of achievers at the time when this game came out knew this was happening. They were using Frostbite's, or sorry, they were using Frostbite, EA's engine. Mm -hmm. which is used to make Battlefield. So they're using a first-person shooting engine to make an RPG. For people who don't understand how engines work, which is perfectly fine, because engines just honestly sound like complete nonsense when you really describe what they are. You, they're not like you can copy-paste things. It's not like you can take Call of Duty engine and be like, all right, I want to make, make a side-scroller. Like It doesn't really work that yeah. way. Unless you, from the ground up, build inside that engine. That's what they had to do. They had to take an engine that they were forced to use, clearly forced to use, and they didn't want to use it. And the reason they were forced to use because this saves on costs. If you did not use Frostbites, you have to now cut your budget to rent out an engine. For instance, Unreal. I don't know the cut. I believe it's like, I think it depends on how much money you make, but it's like 8% of your total revenue or something like that. I don't remember, but you have to cut your profit immediately. You, all, you immediately lose upfront, uh, upfront profit. So you, you miss ROI as soon as you sign a contract with a company like Unreal. Unless you make some sort of custom contract. Custom contract, by the way, shout out to people who's listed the interview because they know exactly what I'm talking about. That was an interesting thing in the last interview too <laughs> about custom contracts. But so that was one issue he brought, he brought up. And then he has a, a quote that I'm going to read that it kind of puts it perfectly and really kind of shits on EA. Quote, transitioning to Frostbite was a Herculean effort by that team and by the studio. That team did an amazing job of reimagining what Dragon Age could be. And after figuring out what that was, putting it all into a game, that was certainly a high mark for me, end quote. This man brings up the fact that he was able to help a, help a studio bring... Frostbite to be able to run an RPG, and that is one of his high marks, is being able to do that. That tells you how nonsensical that entire thing was, that that man had to do that. And that's, and that's like his star, is like, I made that work. It, he actually brings up a former executive producer, my, uh, Mark Dower. He said that, he, he had a famous line, he brings up an interview, quote, Frostbite has no notion of player or health, end quote, which is a <laughs> hilarious thing, just shitting all over this thing. It's like, this thing yeah. is terrible, apparently. They just hated it. And I knew, I remember at the time, a lot of industry people being like, they're using Frostbite for Battlefield. That's very weird. And I remember at the time, them, them kind of deflecting, like, I don't know, we, we're able to utilize, you know, they pay our stuff. But yeah. It tells you right now that that game hurt majorly from that that one point. Now, I want to bring this, and Alex, I want to I want to admit here, I want to kind of take kind of happy lap after say after reading this. Something that we've said multiple times that multiple people in the industry have said verbatim, this does not happen, and this is a prominent dev on the record saying this exact thing that me and you have sat here and argued. For instance, God of War Ragnarok, and for instance, um, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, when we learned that they were not going to be PS5 exclusives. Quote. But I'd say the biggest compromise came from the fact that we had to ship Inquisition, 
on the Xbox 360 and the PS3 at the same time as we did on the PS4 and Xbox One. That crushed so much ambition because we didn't have the team size or the time to differentiate those things truly. So you had to kind of develop the lowest common denominator. And as that came in, that certainly beat out some expectations and ambitions we had for certain fun features in gameplay. In contrast, CD Projekt Red didn't do that with The Witcher 3 a few months later, and I think their game was better for it, end quote. Alex, they have, I have multiple people on Twitter mm. have vehemently said that developing for the lowest common denominator is not mm. hurting development this is a man at bioware sorry um he used to work at bioware hey, he's not what aaron flynn aaron flynn yeah he's not there anymore yeah bioware's aaron flynn he's still there well that's, uh, that's so, so many people have left it's hard to know so many people have left but a prominent studio head Let's see. at the time of dragon age inquisition yeah he left oh okay okay i thought so i said Developing for the lowest common denominator hurt their game. Just want to take a victory lap, if I'm being honest. This is completely petty of me. I've mm -hmm. said this. We said it on the show. You agreed with me. We agreed with each other, really. That you are moving development costs when you have to port on a lower-gen console. That lower is gen, just yeah. fucking math. I'm sorry. It's just math. Yeah. So when you tell me this, it you are either lying to yourself... Or you just misunderstand the yeah. situation. It's, it's, it's not, it's not going to hurt anything. No, 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 no. no. It's so easy. Hit the button. It works on PS4 now. Yeah. Look at, look at, uh, like, it's, it's probably so a bad easy. example, but look at, look at the Call of Duty, what was it, Black Ops 3? On the Xbox One, it, it, like, the tanks and stuff, everything looks fine. You go to the 360 version, could barely run, and there was a van instead of a tank. Yeah. And the graphics were completely different. Like, yeah. No one, talks about game. Any, no, no one talks about any of that stuff. They're only talking about like, no, this, this is great. Everything should work on the PS4 and PS5. Why, why, should, why should there be exclusives? It, they should be on both systems. Where, where the fuck did all these arguments come from? No one said this yeah. when the 360 came out. No one was like, why are there 360 exclusives? It's, I it's, could play it's, everything on my Xbox original. What the fuck happened in like the last five, six years that people are suddenly like caring? I wanted to bring this up, Alex, because... This is a man that clearly has read a lot of industry inciting people with podcasts and influencers and large people basically mm. stating that nothing changes when they have to port a console. I mean, this is pretty clear that this man is straight up saying they are all wrong. Mm. He's even, he used lowest common denominator, which is like the word. Because yeah, that's a thing a lot of people do. They kind of like, they pick like the statement and they all kind of agree to all use it. And that's that's what they were all saying. The, the, the developing for the lowest common denominator wasn't good. They brought up like PCs as an example, which is not one to one. That's not the same thing. These aren't PCs. That's not, not how yeah. it works. And they brought up PCs as if that was easy too. And I was like, "That's you guys just are fucking wrong here." And I, and no one no one listened. And Alex, are you gonna take my hand and take this victory lap with me? What you think? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll hold it tight, man. <laughs> now I will say this. I will say this. <laughs> This is one guy saying this. I'm not saying this is a fucking blanket statement for every single game out there. Yeah. Bringing Journey to PS4 to PS3, probably not a lot of work. Yeah. But making a current gen system work for a last gen system. Mm -hmm. It's like, I mean, it's like saying like, like God of War Ragnarok, if you works on PS4 and we have a PS5 version. Do you really think that's not going to hurt that I game? I still don't understand people with that argument. You're like, telling that me. Game, like, you're telling me now that you're saying you cannot call this game a next-gen game because it's on the last-gen. You, you can't call it that now. So it's not as... The, uh, the resources are not... Like, it's... I don't believe... You're taking from the resources I, from the next... From the new-gen to last-gen, and it's going to hurt all, both of them. Yeah, for, yeah it's just in case people out there are still a little confused it costs money to develop for another system yeah. so bare minimum and this isn't even this isn't even everything but let's just say it's just the money let's say it costs a hundred thousand dollars and it's way more than that let's say it's a hundred thousand dollars to pour in a ps5 game to ps4 that's a hundred thousand dollar less you got to put it on something else and that is not how much it costs it costs a lot more than no, that no no it's cost but, more it's like I, I i see it like this it's like let's say uh i'm gonna go back to god of war since that game hasn't come out yet 
we get they say they want to port a PS4 version. So they're like, hey, we're gonna give you two options. You can keep it on PS5, and you have the your perform your performance mode is, or straight up standard mode is 4K 60. St- everything's running perfect. Right. Or you can have a PS4 version, but you have to have a, qu- a resolution mode now where there's it runs at 30 frames. And you and might you not have time thing. to make it the patch not- that works both because we've seen that it multiple times. Yep. That, that studio so now start. you're hurting your gameplay of the next gen, which is supposed to be great. It doesn't feel like next gen because now you want a last gen version. That's, that's so great you're pretty much pl- you're pretty much playing a last gen version on your new system. I agree. I, I mean, I I agree with that. Like when you tell me it takes no money to make Ragnarok work for PS4, I'm just gonna laugh at you. If I'm being honest, like it just doesn't make any sense to me. If you're telling me right now that the game director, I'm blanking his name right now. I apologize. It's not Corey yeah, takes- he, He's working on the next game. It takes no um, money. He's yeah, I know you're hurting game, money. But the game director, you're telling me that he did not have to cut something, an idea, because it now has to work oh, on yeah. PS4. Yeah, you're wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's just wrong. It, instead of that, I'll 4K bring up an example. Native, it's 1440 now. Thank you. I'll bring Goodbye. up. <laughs> I'll bring up. An, I'll bring up an example. Resident Evil Village. Remember, yep. Alex? You had this uh, the situation where there was a giant elevator. Mm-hmm. Remember when you hit the elevator and it goes up, and it mm-hmm. takes like. Uh, 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 it was like really fast, but like, why is there a giant elevator through this? So, so it has time to load. It's time to load, but, yeah. But now they had to, but they had to design that for low origin systems to be able to work that elevator. So yeah. Like the entire, like, there's an entire section that had to be designed around loading that probably did not need to if they had only an SSD to worry about. But now they kind of transformed a whole level to kind of work better with yeah. an older system. That's just a a very it's like imagine like uh, way of putting I mean, it. No, no, I get it, because, I mean, I feel the same way with, uh, with Elden Ring. We were talking about this the other day. They have that huge elevator that you go from underground to yeah, you above ground. Yeah, you could definitely ground. tell that was loading a lot you of stuff. You could tell that's a load. Oh, my God. That's a t- yeah, that's, a, that's loading. But, like, imagine if that game was strictly next-gen. Do you think that elevator would have taken as long? Probably not. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? We won't know because we, 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 we never know. We'll never know. Uh, clearly, yeah. clearly, it's it didn't, look. It didn't cost anything. All right. Hey, look, developers, just click the copy to PS4 button. All right, you fucking idiots. It's, it's <laughs> like it's like it's like hey, they. You see the, the the look at their desktop. You see it says it says <laughs> uh, next gen version. Yeah. Right click, copy, <laughs> rename, just, PS4 just, version, and they drag it over. Then you drag it, and it's and, and then you click the thing downgrade <laughs> easy as that yep take an early day they everyone notice. they won't notice anything i just wanted to bring this up alex literally because i'm a petty bitch and i want and i, and I wanted to, and sh- shocking alex look at the twitter timeline not a single fucking person <laughs> talking about this yep this is an example of of let's make sure we keep i think this is a great uh, lesson of keep an open mind i try to go out of my way when i say i'm wrong on the show all the time I didn't see a single person say, oh, wow, this is crazy. Dragon Age Tradition said that they actually were hurt because they had... It's crazy. I never thought about it, you know. Never be too proud to admit you're wrong. Because I know I'm not, because I'm wrong fucking literally all the time. And he did, uh, he did end the uh, interview saying that that was his two main points. And he said he did say he wished he communicated it better with the top brass at EA. Yeah, I don't. Aaron, Aaron, first off, your name is written dope as hell. Aaron, that is an awesome way of spelling Aaron. A A R Y N. Come on, that's mm-hmm. sick. Second, I highly doubt any higher up at EA would listen for five fucking seconds about what you were saying. So <laughs> these are the same people who were like, were, uh, uh, "That's like another." <laughs> Alex, this is mm-hmm. pretty exciting. We were talking about it earlier. Tomb Raider game. Being developed Who right on Unreal Engine 5 during a state of Unreal. Dallas Dickinson. A lot of D's. Now, 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 now. Oh, you, oh, said oh. Un- oh, you said un- un- Gen Bro 5, right? Unreal Engine 5, yes. Is this going to be on a previous gen game as well? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Let's uh, find franchise out. general manager of Tomb Raider revealed that there is a new Tomb Raider game currently in development. Tomb Raider and, uh, in development. And they are utilizing Unreal Engine 5 for their game. Crystal yeah. Dynamics is working on the title still, which is the same team that has made their reboot trilogy, starring with Tomb Raider in 2013 and seemingly ending with Shadow of the Tomb Raider in 2018. 
I said 2013 for the other one, right? I didn't mess that up. Maybe. Tomb Raider mm-hmm. in 2013. I feel like I said 2018 yeah. twice. Sorry if I did. Crystal Dynamics has been in the spotlight due to the recent disastrous re- release of Marvel's Avengers on March 18th of 2021. And has recently announced a subset of their team is being quote unquote borrowed by Microsoft to aid in development of the Perfect Dark remake currently being developed at the initiative. And this is uh, Alex A. Section only game. Just so you know. Good. Yes. Good. Now, Alex. I can't imagine a la- I can't imagine a last gen fucking uh, system doing Unreal Engine five. Yeah, I actually be curious if that can even happen. I imagine it can't because I just assumed loading is just gonna become way yeah, too big I of an like... issue. Yeah. Uh, so it would just become mute at that point. But uh, Alex, um, does this excite you? I mean, we're seeing a crystal, obviously wounded um, from. I mean, Ego and a bunch of other stuff uh, clearly being forced to make Marvel's Avengers, at least seemingly, and pretty much failed at that project. Now going yeah, back I, to Tomb Raider I, with Unreal Engine 5 and also losing most likely half of their team to Microsoft to help the shit show over there with Perfect Dark Remake. Yeah. Oof, I mean, I'm happy to not be a person like Chris and I may. I mean, this is, all, first off, a lot to juggle. I know they probably can handle it. I am excited to see how this Tomb Raider game is going to go out. Um, they did kind of hint that it's they're going to try and bring in the old game in with the new reboot kind of thing and have a melding of both games. So the, this new, so you're saying this is so this new Tomb Raider is a, is there like a reboot? Is a brand new one, or it's not continuing? Yeah, it, no, the last it, we got? it is not gonna. No, it's. I don't think they really got into it too deeply, if I remember correctly. They kind of just were like, yeah, um, it's it's gonna be kind of a new thing. Okay, like they didn't really super get into it, but it, they hinted as if, like, they're excited to make use the Tomb Raider IP. But they did not gotcha. directly say, hey, this is a sequel to the yeah. other one. Yeah, it's just weird because they made all the other ones. So, like, when they, and then they, it's weird. So, I guess, yeah, so they'll have a, this is the, like, their first, they had a, uh, their first trilogy. And now they're going to, now they're so, going to start over. Yeah, so this is his direct quote. So, this is the game director, Will Kerslack. They want to unify the storylines between the reboot trilogy and the original games. Do with that knowledge as you will. I have no idea what that means. I'm assuming he wants to kind of make a hybrid of both games to kind of yeah. try and marry both playstyles and make something else. I don't know. Please, Maybe? for the love of God, do not make another open world game. Is my one pray. Just make a linear Tomb Raider game that has a great story. Yeah. Because these games didn't have terrible stories. I didn't love Shadow of the Tomb Raider. But I yep. did enjoy the first uh, Tomb Raider game. I, I kind of liked it. It was a little too gritty. They were trying a little too hard. And they clearly yeah. did not stick the landing. Uh, but Alex, I want your opinion on this. So you played the three games as well. Yeah, um, I never finished Shadow, like we said. But no, I mean... Yeah, I didn't either. It, it, really it, it, it's, I think it, throughout the games, I think it just it kind of like lost its mojo i think so too uh the second um, one wasn't nearly as good either in my opinion I and mean, i'll yeah. be honest they were all kind of average games to begin with it's not like one yeah. was particularly great i think both were kind of just like like just kind of like oh these are all yeah. right games but what do you want out of this do you even have a desire is there something that they can get you to come back <laughs> to me i want a it's i mean it's this- hard because it went like when i look at two the, these tomb raider games I'm like it's and it's su- it sucks because I feel like Tomb Raider technically came first before any of these. Right. But I'm lo- I'm looking at it and I'm like, I rather play on un- I rather play Uncharted. So that's that's the hilarious thing that Uncharted 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 gives me that sense of like I'm like I love these stories. Right. Like because so, it's so more it's such more linear and like mm-hmm. you know throughout the games they became yes. a little bit more open. A little like bit, that. not much, but a little, little bit. bit. But it still kept the story like compelling what's hilarious is uncharted clearly i mean i believe the code name for either it was either the code name for the game or the code name for or this could be fake but i think he was literally called dude raider at one point mm. like they were taking direct inspiration from Tomb raider and made a guy version they made, they made an indiana jones tomb yeah. raider person 
that went yeah. and raided to i mean he literally is in tombs yeah. half the time no yeah like, so it, that is a clear inspiration what's even more hilarious is it, it looks like they are now trying to <laughs> copy uncharted so it's like a circle yeah of fuckery like Tomb Raider kind of started it. Point, Uncharted tried uh, and did it well. I think better than the Tomb Raider oh, yeah. games, honestly. No, did same. It. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and then I feel like Tomb Raider is now like... trying to chase the Uncharted dragon. Like it's the, it's a very strange it's... circle that kind of happened. Yeah, I just it sucks because at this point I feel like I'm like just give Tomb Raider to Naughty Dog, but like at the same time, <laughs> but, then, but then like if you do that, but if you do Damn, that, Alex, wait, but if you do that. Then people are then gonna be Spo- like, well, why do we need that if we already have the spoilers Uncharted on here? for Uncharted Four? Skip in twenty, skip twenty seconds. Mm, they clearly were it. trying to do that. Yeah, clearly. Right, Achievers, we're yeah. back. We're back. No spoilers. Even though we didn't say anything, but yeah. No, we didn't say anything. I actually thought I, I didn't need to say anything. No, no, I knew exactly. What they you're clearly about. were doing something. So yeah, but which I hope you and I do understand. something with that. Yeah, S- Sony San Diego is all I'm gonna say. Sony San Diego. I mean, hey. Wouldn't be shocked. Wouldn't be shocked. Anyways. Um, yeah, I I hope they I hope when they come back, it's from a they sat down, they really kind of figured out, all right, who is Tomb Raider? Is she because to me, Tomb Raider is an orphan kid that had to kind of be raised by Butler. It, you know, it sounds like it sounds a lot like Batman. But Yeah. But <laughs> Instead of being Batman, she's a fucking Tomb Raider. She goes and she she wants to like continue her father's legacy of like making this giant museum mansion thing and like keep doing it. Maybe she becomes more of like a Robin Hood figure and like make brings back to museums yeah. or something. Like there's fun ways you can tell the story. Yeah. Maybe even make her like a half Robin Hood figure. That I hope that they learn and they don't try to do. All right, let's like kind of let's make sure she has. Uh, like, make sure it's gritty. Make sure there's dirt. Make sure she's always dirty. Like, like yeah. that's one thing that made it clear. Like, look at her in the dirt. She's dirty. She's a Tomb Raider. Ah, one of my favorite yeah. parts of the Tomb Raider game, surprisingly, shocking to everyone I know, when she raided tombs, there was a fucking side quest things, like yep. you know, kind of like collectibles, where you would go inside these tombs. They were literally called tombs, and you would take stuff in them. Those were really fun. I actually enjoyed them a lot. Yeah. If they somehow incorporate that in maybe a gameplay style or like make it, I don't know, side quests or something like I, I don't that know. Was the, I don't... That was the issues with those games. Like they, it's not that they were bad games. It's like they didn't give me the the feeling of like who is Tomb Raider. Like how did she who become is Laura, this? Yeah. Le- yeah, who is Lara and how did she become this legend? Not to where not she just came went to this random island and now she's fighting all these fucking people. Just Green Arrow. Yeah, and it's like it's <laughs> it's like it's like okay. She had she helped us this, this island. Did, is this what made her a legend? I don't know. Now she's at this one place that they like, you know, there's a fucking Mayan calendar bullshit. I don't yeah, fucking there know. There was what a lot happened. of weird There was a lot of weird stuff. I remember in the first game, uh, when you they tried to make it a big deal when she kills a person. Um, yeah. and they actually do it around a rape scene, which is which was, I was like, holy shit, what the fuck are they doing? And but you yeah. end up killing the guy and she's like freaking out, like, oh my god, like, and and you kind of feel. You kind of feel for her, like, holy shit, yeah, she, this is the first time killing somebody. This is the first time, yeah. But then five seconds later, you pick up a handgun and kill five people. I'm like, okay, well, you can't have a fucking, you can't make a very serious moment. And, and then, then immediately go, by the way, end. there's five people. You better shoot them all in the face and murder them all. Yep. And now and now you're Nathan Drake and you're killing people and you don't think about it because, like, you've, uh, you're have you a mass murderer if you, th- <laughs> if you think about it for five seconds. <laughs> so, uh, so. Uh, there's things like that that they didn't really figure out what themes they wanted to play with either. So yeah. kind of like I hope they kind of sit down and like, all right, what's what's the what's our theme? Who's Laura? Where are we gonna start with with her legacy? Are we gonna kind of build her up from the beginning? Are we gonna start where she's already a Tomb Raider and we're gonna mm-hmm. learn later who she, who she was? You know. And so let's, they kind of try to do. They kind of already try to do that with the flashbacks where she was a kid. You're climbing through the them, you know, uh, Croft Manor, and I'm like, I like that because you're like, okay, she kind of started young. This is what she's doing, but yeah. like, give me more of that, not to where, okay, back to the island. You're killing people. I'm exactly. like, oh. murder everyone. By the way, this huge map, open world. You know, we're still doing yeah. that thing. So I'm, I'm praying this is a linear 
Hope, please. Yeah, just, just give me, try yeah, to be give a me a linear one. <laughs> just try yeah. to be a chart. Literally, yeah, literally, it, that works. <laughs> it sounds, I, I, it sounds mean, but like it sucks. But yeah, I don't come wanna, on. I, like they, they put in a lot of useless shit. Like in there. this, that's why I'm hoping. I'm hoping they learn. The people who are doing Indiana Jones, I am hoping they learn from that. I am hoping they learn from that. Because I have, I, I feel like that, that. I forgot. I, I like, forgot about I, Indiana Jones. I feel like that game will have potential. <sighs> Let's just see what good. happens. I, I'm I'm hopeful Who is that? because who's doing that again? Bethesda. I'm hopeful because Bethesda, right? Pete Howard that he's always wanted to make an Indiana Jones game. So I'm like, all right, Pete, <laughs> balls in your court, bro. You've said you he, wanted to. Pete Hines Howard. or Todd Howard? Or it's, I'm I'm sorry. I combined the two people. Thank <laughs> you for catching me. Todd Howard. Jesus Christ. Todd Howard. That is Thank embarrassing. You. I was like, I was like, bro. I was like, what? Who's it's Pete by, Howard? Like, they've combined into a, a, a sentient being, and now they are uh-huh. one. Todd Howard. I got him. I got in my head way too much. Todd Howard. I, yeah. I started blowing up. Yeah, the so dude Todd Howard is showing. Yeah, yeah, the head yeah, yeah. of the fucking whole thing. He's a genius yep. millionaire guy now because of the Bethesda deal. Billionaire, maybe. Um. Yeah, that's his baby. Uh, as far yep. as what I understand, like, like he's always wanted to make an Indiana Jones game. This is him being able to do it. So I trust Todd Howard. Make a good game, bro. Yeah. Alex? I think that I think they could do it. I think they could do it. Ubisoft has announced via the Ghost Recon Twitter account that the last update for Ghost Recon Breakpoint was the recent release of Operation Motherland mode. They added a bunch of items ranging from like the 20th anniversary outfits that they added, more quartz items, which is their attempt of adding NFTs to the game. Okay. And uh, that was our last update. Uh, this is their final update to the actual game. They're going to kind of move on to something future. They said they are going to maintain the servers of both Ghost Recon Wildlands and Breakpoint. So they're seemingly no end. I'm pretty positive they're going to go on for 5 to 10 year plus at this point. So you're, everyone's good that it's still playing those games. Uh, and by the way, because everyone here forgot, remember Ghost Recon Frontlands is a game that exists no one listening to this podcast remembered that that is in development. I guarantee you. That's that free to play game, by the way, Alex. Remember that? It's not the out yet. Got, the, you mean the one that we got? But I bet I could have told everyone with, it was out and they would have believed me. Remember, you mean like the one that I got confused with um, Division Heartlands? See, I thought you were going to say X Defiant. Remember that? X Defiant? Oh. Yeah, I do remember that. Oh my God. Um, Wildlands was released on March 7th, 2017 to a surprising uh, fan base and did have some legs after launch with a bunch of cool updates like adding the Predator to fight in the game. That was really cool. We me announced that. Yeah. That was and fun. then that was followed by uh, a breakpoint that released October 4th in 2019. But uh, it's pretty much agreed in the fan base and the community at large. And then they they were disappointed Terminator with the release. That? They did. No one yeah, I think I did. I, 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 did. I actually did that. This shit was hard. Was it? <laughs> yeah. A lot of fans, um, actually, I know a lot of people that actually went back to Wildlands after Breakpoint came out. I remember, I remember a lot of people did that. They played uh, Breakpoint and were like, fuck this. And went back to Wildlands. So that's why it's still like kind of a big deal, because people play Wildlands more than they do. Do you remember when uh, Ghost Recon stuff was supposed to stop? Like, stop, or Tom Clancy, excuse me. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah. They said they're, they're, they're going to? I don't believe them. No, they never will. I don't believe them. They're going to keep going. First off, like... They're making a movie now with uh, Michael B. Jordan, or they did. He has like a Tom Clancy movie, and it's like a his, he has his own character. What do you think the percentage is of people who know who Tom Clancy is? Of what? They're buying these <laughs> games. 10%? 5 I, w- I, w- I give it a little more credit, but may I, maybe only that? Yeah. There can't be that many people. My point is, are there people buying it because it says Tom Clancy? Because they're buying it because it says Rainbow Six or Ghost Recon. No, exactly. They're not buying it because it says Tom Clancy. So why are they still using this man's name? No, it's it's like first off, shout out to their family because I believe it's still um I believe it's uh uh. an estate run. So his Mm -hmm. family is making the money. Hey, yeah. Hey, keep making the money. They're agreeing to it. So I do you think but it's, I'm just saying, Jesus, no one knows Tom Clancy, so they're still do you using think it's, his name. 
do you think it's the same thing? I, I'm sure before, but now, like with Madden, do you know if do you think how much? What's the percentage for Joe Madden? That's a good point. I do think a lot more, be only because a lot of football people play Matt, play Madden, and they know who John Madden is. John Madden yeah. is almost. I mean, fuck, is his name? Oh, sorry, John. I, I said Joe. Yeah, it's John Madden. John, I'm yeah, fifty percent <laughs> confident in that. I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's John Madden. But uh, that dude was uh, fucking it's, it's, hilarious. It's, it's John Madden. I that said dude Joe was hilarious. Hey, rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, we never talked about it on the show. I don't think yeah. they'll ever change the name. Um, and by the way, bet your ass, jo- uh, uh, John Madden's on the cover this year. I, th- I think it's going to be a John Madden cover, similar For to the 2023. Yeah, similar to Kobe Bryant's cover year when he passed mm-hmm. away. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be the same deal. Yeah. But but yeah, I, yeah yeah that dude was awesome. I only saw yeah. clips. I don't think I was uh, cognizant of when I was watching when because I would yeah. watch football with my dad, obviously. And, and sports. <laughs> it's in the game. game. Um, so I, I, I knew, I knew of him, but I didn't really understand that was the guy writing on it and uh, mm. joking and stuff. There's a lot of funny clips. Go, go treat yourself if you want. Just John Madden funny clips on YouTube. I'm sure you have a good time. Yep. The Raven Strike has paid off over at Activision Blizzard, Alex. Let me read you their spoils of war. Reported by Game Decision Shop Biz by Brendan Sinclair stated the following. Activision Blizzard is turning all of their temp QA workers in the U.S. to full-time employees with full benefits. This means nearly 1,100 people are going to be affected by the change. They are also raining their minimum hourly pay to $20 starting April 20th. This is a major demand. By Raven QA in December in strike. Alex. Wanna you wanna go be part per- of the strike? Yeah, sure. I yeah, why not? I mean, hey, they already won, so we can just reap the benefits, right? Right? Joking aside. Shout out to these guys. Hey, it, it shows that uh when you have weight and you pull it around, hey, you get what you want. I'm happy for them. They got what they wanted. They uh apparently a lot of people had their back, like a bunch of people in Raven actually stood by the QA people as walking out, like, hey, we need these guys. So why did you fire them all? Apparently yeah. there was like a lot of logistics and stuff, but like, hey, I'm down. Hey, whoever wants to unionize strike, hey, do it. As long as you got power, hey, man, flex it. Recently, um, Amazon has a union with a, a gentleman that was fired a few, uh, like a year ago. They were able to start a union and they're unionized now too. Glad to see yeah. Amazon shit show over there. Fucking shit show. Yeah. So glad to see that someone's using over there. Fuck it, Jeff Bezos running off to space. I, mean, I don't know if you ever saw that, but you remember when he came nope. down and thanked everyone that worked at Amazon? <laughs> oh my God. And he thanked the people at Amazon, pissing in bottles and stuff, driving around. He's like, hey, appreciate it, by the way, for letting me go to space. That I was like, damn, that dude just said, go fuck yourself. Wow. That was incredible to watch. That, I, was like, felt, I was like, I can't believe he said that. <laughs> this dude doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. Oh my God. Moving on. Unless, Alex, you, you have anything to, to add? No, no, I don't. Okay. I mean, I, it's good. I'm glad. I mean, I, I'm glad they, a, there was an, uh, an outcome, a positive outcome a for, positive, for them. Yeah, for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. I'm happy yeah. for them. Good for them. The Lego Group and Epic Games have teamed up for a very strange uh, thing that I don't quite understand. I don't even think they do. This is on mm-hmm. the Epic Games official site. What's the announcement? Well, they're making a safe metaverse. For kids and families. I don't know what that means. If you want to read what they said, you can go over to uh, Epic Games' official website. I will read the quotes that both people gave him. Uh, clearly, Are you though. telling me Legos is not safe for kids now? Well, they're making a metaverse, Alex. Do you not understand that? Metaverse. Mm. Mm. So now as B. Christensen, the CEO of Lego Group, said the following. Quote, Kids enjoy playing in digital and physical worlds and move seamlessly between the two. We believe there is huge potential for them to develop lifelong skills such as creativity, collaboration, and communication through digital experiences. But we have a responsibility to make them safe, inspiring, and beneficial for all. Just as we protected children's rights to safe physical play for generations, we're committed to doing the same for digital play. We look forward to working with Epic Games to shape this exciting and playful future. End quote. Tim Sweeney also gave a quote, CEO and founder of Epic Games. Um... One of the fucking dudes probably rolling in cash right now. Quote, the Lego group has captivated the imagination of children and adults through creative play for nearly a century. And we are excited to come together to build a space in the metaverse that's fun, entertaining, and made for kids and families. Much shorter quote by this man. He was like, short, sweet, like, but I'm happy. 
Anyways, yeah. I have like seven other things to go do in Fortnite. I got a, you know, <laughs> you got a fucking concert. Joe, Joe Logan and Jake's gonna be in the next things. We're all excited. Jokes aside, Alex. I have almost nothing to add to this because I don't know what any of that means. I know the metaverse is like a virtual space when I... that you can play inside of. So maybe there's going to be a so kid I... only one that is only for kids. Maybe you can't be in it unless you're a family member. I don't So uh, I Sounds like Roblox, every... but with extra steps. Yeah, every time I think of a metaverse, every time I hear something, I always go back to the PS3 home thing. I think honestly, like, that's a fucking perfect way of putting it. I mean, yeah, like that was a game. Yeah, it wasn't even a. I mean, it wasn't even a game. It was, a, it was an experience. It was well, it was a a life it was style. Like a it thing, was. Yeah. I mean, it was like Sims. Like a Sims. yeah, Sims. Sims. I mean, I was gonna say. Sims is a hybrid game. It was like life Sims Live thing. <laughs> but like, yeah, you walked around and you talk to people i remember you shit. could go in movie theaters i did that and you could watch mm-hmm. certain things i remember the tester i think was on once or something fucking weirdly ahead of its time no one would think to have said that in like 2000 and look at it now like it's five back. or whatever it was. and yeah it's kind of it's back kind of like i'm i would not be surprised if playstation would be like hey you want us to bring back playstation home no i think they're really holding it to their chest like we're only bringing this back when it clearly is be- it was a big thing like because metaverse like i'm sorry on facebook or like everybody starts becoming like oh we need this space then that's when they'll bring it out yeah i'm, I'm sorry but like metaverse just does not seem like the thing maybe it will be maybe i'm just dumb and i don't see it's, it but it's like, literally yeah, the opposite of getting your kids out of the house that is true it is the opposite it's just like sitting there it's like sword art online you like that anime it's sort of yeah, like yeah. Kinda, i don't I don't even fully understand what a metaverse is. It sounds like you basically games as they are now, like GTA Online. Every time mm-hmm. I hear metaverse, I'm just like, so games? Video games? Fucking what? Are you Sims? I don't know. I just wanted to bring it up because it is gaming related. Yeah. Uh, gaming adjacent, even. It's Yeah, it's like one of those things where we still don't really know too much about it yet. Yeah, I'll be excited to see. Apparently, uh, f- then watch it blow up. Sorry, Facebook or meta. I guess meta apparently are like they do meetings in the metaverse and stuff. It. Oh, what? Yeah, exactly. They did agree to three principles, by the way. So I guess this is like, uh, their version of, um, uh, robots don't dream of electric sheep (laughs) kind of rules, uh, protect children's rights to play by making safe and well-being a priority. Safeguard children's privacy by putting their best interests first. Empower children and adults with tools that give them control over their digital experience. Sure. Interesting. Date updates for you. Alex. Hmm. You can't tell me you didn't read this and not think of me. Return to Monkey Island has been announced and is coming 2022. Woo! With the original correct, uh... Uh, created too. I am so excited for this. Me and my you dad, were, you love played, this game. Me and my dad played these. I was introduced uh, uh, with my dad when they came out on 360. You were like, Go play this, and I'm like, Ugh. and you didn't. Right. Which I no, back then I didn't know like what like I didn't know what people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're a kid, you don't know like people have things that they like. So yeah, I have I, to go back to it now and try it and see no, what it is. No, I don't know. You don't think I'll get into it? No. Okay. It's a uh, it's a point and click. So it's a okay. Uh, I'm in a room. How do I get out? Um, I found a screwdriver. Gotcha. Let me try it. The screwdriver. Gotcha. Poke the, you know, it's that, but it's silly. Like I, I got. Gotcha, it's gotcha. very it's very uh, funny writing. Got it. Um, this is of course Lucas Films. Um, this is a sequel to uh, Monkey Island Two: LeChuck's Revenge, <clears throat> which is the last time we've seen it back in 1991. That's how long it's been damn yeah and what's great is um the the uh gilbert and dave uh grossman said they would never make another one unless they want like unless they had a great idea which makes me yeah. excited like they they have me, said that yeah, before. like it was worth they're like hey we're not we're, we're not gonna make one unless like we have a reason to come back and they're back mm-hmm. which means like like what is it? It might be, like it. Hope like it does not look like they're just doing it for fun. Like it looks like they have a good idea and they might come through. Dude, if this is good, uh, I'm so excited. Yeah, 
I'm gonna be so excited. We're gonna save Game Pass for last because that's always the longest one. So, uh, quickly, Mario Golf is coming to the Nintendo 64 expansion service for Nintendo Online April 5th. If you pay for the service, of course, that will be oh, added. Already, it no, should be already out. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Sorry, it is April 5th. So it's already out. Um, if you already pay for the service, as a reminder, you already will have it. You don't do anything. You just go play the game. Sweet. THQ Nordic will be hosting a digital showcase on Friday, August 12th. So as if you're listening to the day of in exactly a week, you will have a THQ Nordic. Expect just random, just random shit. Alex, if you remember, mm. if you remember, wasn't there a Geoforce leak of Destroy All Humans game that is not out yet? This could be a- what you get. I know you like your Destroy All Humans. If I remember correctly... Well, wasn't THQ Nordic also working on like 200 IP titles? <laughs> they're full of shit. We all know that. We everyone here knows they're full of shit. They're not working on 200 games. I just refuse. I refuse. No, so, yeah, no. I'm ex- I'm excited. I'm hoping we get Destroy Humans three. Yes, and I remember if I remember correctly, that was in the GeoForce Now leak. Yeah, so yeah, because I everything yeah, cause else had... has been right. So probably yeah, that I, right. yeah. No, I love I, l- I love Destroy All Humans. Rogue Legacy. That was, like, that, that was like my game, like like what you just said, the Return to Monkey Island game. That was like that was my my childhood game. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. Rogue Legacy Two launches April twenty eighth on PC, Xbox Series S and X, and Xbox One. Can you double check for me if they make sure that's PlayStation as well? I don't have it listed, but it should be. I thought it was. One again. Rogue Legacy. Rogue Legacy, Rogue Legacy Two, which should be the very first thing that comes up. Can you double check? I'm, I apologize, but I'm pretty sure I saw that for other systems. The only for uh, Rogue Legacy is slated for Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. Uh, for the time being, PlayStation and Nintendo Switch versions have not yet officially announced. Interesting. Why? That means it's coming to Game Pass. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, oh, and uh, breaking news. I was not able to write this because I literally saw it a couple hours ago. Um, could be nothing. I meant to put this in a rumor roundup. This will just be a date update. There was a trademark in Japan for the name. It, it should be oh, Tactic Ogre Remaster or something like that. It was something like that. So we're probably getting that Final Fantasy Tactics remake mm-hmm. very soon. Because gotcha. that was also in the GeoForce Now remake. And yeah. we're seeing the filing. We're probably getting that pretty soon. Um, for Rogue Legacy, I didn't know. I don't, th- I don't think you said it. Um... You can get it the first one for free through the Epic Game Store until the thirteenth. Oh, don't remember yeah. if we covered that. If last you haven't time. tried Rogue Legacy, you can get it through Epic Game Store for free until the thirteenth. Nice of this month. I have to grab that. Yeah. Game Pass available already. Cricket Twenty Two, MLB The Show Twenty Two. That's something we kind of glossed over. We did cover a, sh- uh, a news story, but like we haven't really glossed back to it. First off, apparently that's a very easy thousand slash platinum for people who play MLB and care about trophies and achievements. So check that yeah. out. Second off, oh, uh, Switch doesn't have. Uh, second yeah. off, there's crossplay and cross progression. So if you have multiple copies, oh, wow. cross progression. Thirdly, I did download this because I at least want to try it again, just like I did with Twenty One, where I played it for like five minutes and went, I can't, I don't, yeah. I don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing wrong, so I'm gonna give up. But I'm yeah. going to try again and see if I can get an easy thousand. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. This is all coming soon. I'll be reading the dates. This is live as of today. These next uh, four, seemingly. Chinatown Detective Agency, April 7th. This is day one on Game Pass. I do read day one Game Passes. So, Chinatown Detective Agency is a cyber noir point and click adventure blending stunning retro design with innovative mechanics. Plays Amiria Dharma, an ex cop who has just opened her own detective agency, shoots your clients, travel around the world. And solve dangerous cases using real world research. Coming to the cloud for EA Play, Dragon Age 2, April 7th. So today. Plants vs. Zombies Gone Warfare also coming to the cloud, April 7th. So today. Star Wars Cauldrons also coming to the cloud, EA Play, April 7th. Achievers, you need to listen. <laughs> you need to listen good. I got your weekend figured out. So next weekend or the day of when this comes, you need to sit down. You need to try the game. If you don't like it, that's fine. Give it till chapter one. Do it as a personal favor for me. Because April 12th, Life is Strange True Colors comes to Cloud Console PC for Xbox Game Pass. Achievers. This is my top five 
games of last year. I think it was number three or something like that. Very high. Maybe. I loved this game. Take a time. Play a little bit of it. See if you like it. It was very, very good. I enjoyed every moment of it, just like I enjoyed Life is Strange and Life is Strange Before the Storm. And I think if you like any sort of narrative adventure games or just like good narratives in general, I think you'll enjoy this. Mm. Panzer Corpse 2 comes to PC April 12th. Dungeon of Nahlbuk PC. ID at Xbox <laughs> April 12th. Lost in Random. I've heard good things about this. Call this Cloud cool. Console and PC. This is an EA Play title April 14th. I, I, I heard good things. I might try this game. Lost in Random. Alex, that hmm. is everything. This is everything leaving soon. So as a reminder, you can claim these games either by playing them before the date I give you or you can purchase them prior to them leaving to score 20% off your purchase. So if you want to buy the game before it leaves or play it before the title leaves, they're all up to you. So leaving April 15th, and will be the show 21, Rain on Your Parade, The Long Dark, Pathway. All of those are for cloud console and PC, except for Pathways, only on PC. Leaving April, April 18th, F1 2019, cloud console and PC. Remember, those games, if you'd like, for 20% off before they leave. Alex, that is mm. the news and date update for the week. Yep. As I do every single week, I like to start the show and end the show the same way. This episode, I did not start it with a question because we had such a long story of news to go through. So, before we leave today, we're going to be covering two questions, which is unheard of at the end of the show. <laughs> we're going to start with one. Alex, mm. what have you been playing? This is going to be quick because we haven't been playing anything exciting. But we yeah, did dabble right? more in Tiny Tina's. Yes, we did. We played a little bit more Tiny Tina's, so we were enjoying it. Um, God, so much loot. <laughs> um, Almost too much. Do you agree? It's, it's, it, it's funny because it'll be half the time where we're like, it's like, oh shit, I got a bunch. And you're like, you're like get out of your menu, man. I'm like, stop. I'm trying to look through I'm my like, stuff. I'm like, dude, like you're going to get seven other things in the next screen. Like, like yeah, right? none of this matters right now. Unless we <laughs> kill a boss, like none of this matters. Yeah, I agree. Like it, like, it, kills, it kills me. They could cut it back though. That's a little too. Much. No, yeah, there's a, it's a little much. Um, but um, I did start Lego Star Wars. It's it's so different from the original ones. It's it's great. I mean, it's there's but there's so much to do. It, like at one point, I I felt like I got a little overwhelmed just because it felt it felt like as soon as you hit an area, open world. Or open like area. It's like very open. It's not very. It wasn't linear. Like you know, you kind of used it with Lego games, kind of because like you're like, oh, it's kind of linear. Uh, to be in certain clear, ways. to be clear, I apologize. We're talking about the levels themselves. So or are you at first? In an I environment? couldn't tell. So at first, I couldn't tell that they were levels. And then, like, <laughs> okay, yeah, interesting. It just, it just continued. It, it, there's certain times in the game where like okay you're like you could tell you're like okay i kind of tell i'm in like in the open area before level okay and there'll be a, a you'll get closer you're like hey yeah, go here and it, you'll it'll say oh continue story you're like okay and then it just keeps going so then you can just keep going i'm like what was the point of that so that was a little weird like it doesn't load like a cutscene. it doesn't load an area it's just like I walked to a uh, to a pinpoint. It's like, oh, continue story. I'm like, okay. And then I, and then I got to go like 30 more steps this way. I'm like, and then go that way. I'm like, what was the point of the pinpoint here if I could have just gone that way? There was, but other than that, like the areas are like, it's just, just a lot. Like it's right. probably the, the, think about, remember the, was it Star Wars Force Awakens? Like kind of like how when you were on the planets, it was very open. You're like, whoa, there's a lot of crap to do here. Yeah. It's like that, but like all the time, it feels like. Okay. So like, it's not bad, but like it's, it, it was just, it was just like, I had to get did, used to it again. You did sound overwhelmed when we kind of touch base. When yeah. We start playing the game. So like, yeah, like I said, like at first I was a little overwhelmed, but then I guess I got used to it. And I'm like, okay, because I wasn't expecting that from a Lego game. So, like, okay, I'm like, oh, okay, I got it now, so then I can... Because even the linear missions, or, like, the missions that are kind of supposed to be linear, it, that, those kind of felt open as well. So you're like... So that's why I was like... But the, it, 
but everything is still fun. Like everything's uh, the like very different and like more. The animations are also, are like are like a lot newer and stuff like that. So it's cool. Okay, I want to play more of it. I'm sure we will. I'll be playing a lot of it yep. too. I'm yep. excited. I it's like a perfect game, honestly, for right now because there's nothing coming out for a while. So mm-hmm. you can kind of play at your own pace right now. Uh, this is the time of. Let's get back yeah, to the backlog. Let's figure I'm out. Like, yeah. Let's, let's I'm figure out what we're on things that I bought just from just getting achievements right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I have um, a PS Now. I'm mm-hmm. I'm digging into that. Yeah. I wanted to try out the streaming service because I haven't tried it since 2017, 20, uh, 2018. Yeah, yeah. Like I, the last I, yeah. time I played PS Now, I was playing Bioshock mm-hmm. Infinite because I just I was looking for something try to do. It. Yeah. Uh, and I played that, and I was like, "All right, like it was, it wasn't great, but I was not in the optimal <laughs> network yeah. setting." Let's say that. No, yeah, so, yeah, I, definitely. And I started Infamous uh, also. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. So, and that's you just started, so you're pretty early. But yeah. let me know if that uh, continues. Yeah. But yeah, this is gonna be a time for me of kind of chilling and playing games, kind of relaxing, honestly. Like, uh, I want to play Lego. We're gonna keep playing Tiny when we can. We're gonna jump back and forth. From those two games, I'm gonna jump into PlayStation every now and then, yeah, and just kind of wait until this. I'm sure very busy uh, summer and fall are gonna come. Yeah, very soon. I mean, yeah, shocker. I'm still I'm playing Dark Souls Remastered again. So shocker. I'm playing Destiny. So. We all have those games. <laughs> yeah, Alex. Just like that, I going to the second question that ends the show. This, mm. of course, is uh, what do you have queued up? Now, of course, this could be a book, a comic book, a video game, some sort of movie or TV show that you've been looking forward to. Even so the tabletop I... role-playing game, what do you have queued up for the week, Alex? This is, of course, not only a question for you, but this is a question for the audience. You can go ahead and comment below, tweet at us directly, or, of course, Patreon on our little wall posts. We communicate everywhere. So remember, comment, what do you have queued up for the week? Alex. So, so for achievers who love anime... I, I, I recommend to go to whatever subscriber you use to watch, like Funimation, Hulu, Prime, whatever you're using, or or if you bought it through Xbox, go watch Attack on Titan. Right Achievers, now. I am not min- mincing words here. Now I want to be Titan, very clear. Now I got him into this show. You did. I was like, hey, watch Attack on Titan. It's pretty cool. I was like on season two when I was watching it. Got him into it. I'm caught up season four all the way. Now I'm waiting for part three. Can't believe they're doing it. So excited. Now, I want your opinion, Elijah. How do you feel? I want to be clear about every achiever out there. As long as this show sticks to landing, this is the best anime I've ever watched. By a lot. Um, And I've seen a... a, And again, I'm not some sort of fucking expert. Yeah. But, I mean, I've watched... Just things you've seen. I've watched Naruto... As a condensed four seasons, and there's no, there is not a single ounce of filler in this show. Not a single ounce. Mm-hmm. There is maybe three episodes that you can say like, "eh, this is this kind of feels like filler," but that actually gives you very important lore. Yeah, so it was pretty important, Alex. You remember the castle episode? Yeah. Big castle, mm-hmm. you know, you know what I'm I, talking I about. I know exactly what you're talking about. So that yeah. kind of felt like filler. That's the closest thing this show has gotten to filler. The twists and turns this last season has taken me. I have about four episodes left, I believe. G. I actually had Jesus missed one episode.